Hi, I'm Gary from Raz Rentals. When you got a spooky specter in your house, who are you going to call? The real Ghostbusters, that's who. The real Ghostbusters was a fantastic cartoon. It captured my attention early on and seemed scary, funny, and serious all at the same time. Even now as an adult, I still love watching the first 78 episodes. And yes, even some of the episodes from season 3 and season 4 after Dave Coulier took over for Lorenzo Music. Back in the day, you'd only be able to watch your favorite TV show for a half an hour, but after the show ended, you could keep the story going with your favorite real Ghostbuster toys. In the beginning, you had the four guys, then you had Slimer, Stay Puffed, Bug Eye Ghost, H2 Ghost, Bad to the Bone Ghost, and then you had the cream of the crop, the best of the best, the Gooper Ghosts. Even though I never had these guys, I could tell just by looking at the art on the back of the figure cards that these guys were the top of the line. Sludge Bucket is my second favorite in this line. Much like the others, his face matches everything you'd expect and want from a Ghostbusters toy. Just like the other Gooper Ghost, Sludge Bucket uses ectoplasm as a way to attack the Ghostbusters. Unlike the other Gooper Ghosts, Sludge Bucket uses ectoplasm in a way that I've never seen before or since. But more on that later. Let's take a look at the box. The cover art for this guy is beautiful. I don't know who made these paintings back then, but they deserve a medal for all the real Ghostbuster pieces they made. I mean, look at this thing. This looks great. You have Peter here stuck in the bubble. You have very nice clean lines. Cut very nice to sit on top of this nice ectoplasm backdrop. The front has the artwork and then on the side you can see the actual toy doing the action figure to uh, Peter Venkman here. You know this Peter Venkman doesn't look like the uh, regular Peter Venkman figure. I think that's probably must be the prototype or something because the head is a little different. It's a little off and um, also these bubbles here are not this is not a real picture like you know the toys are pictures but the bubbles are obviously drawn here. So the front, top, and the bottom all have the same picture, and the sides both have this picture. Oh wait, this is different. I like that. Pete's going in head first. Now if you look at the back, it shows the uh, the action feature here. Basically you got sludge bucket, you put some uh, ectoplasm in his mouth, you pump the back, and it blows a bubble. And then uh, you could also make the tongue move around like he's licking his lips. When I got this, uh, I have to be very, very careful. When I got this, he was supposed to be mint in box, and he pretty much is. Except um, the tape was cut, so inside he sits, never to be seen or heard from again. Also inside this box, there is a Ghostbusters poster slash calendar. All the cool kids had those on their walls back in the day. It has the instructions, and... Um, it has the a, a five ounce can of ectoplasm. Sludge bucket is a bright yellow color. Um, when you get them in the box, it comes in three pieces. You have the main body, which is made out of a, a thin plastic. There's like some reinforcement points in the bottom, but otherwise it's pretty thin. You could probably crack or uh, puncture it a little easy. He has very bright, brightly painted lips. And he has stickers for eyes. And he's got huge gaps between his teeth. It's like a ghost of David Letterman. He comes with this tongue that you can control through the back here. So make it look like he's real hungry. 
And the final piece he comes with is a rubber tail. You use the rubber tail to squeeze air through the bottom so you can make a bubble. So we will have to take a look at that in a second. So there you go. All of his appendages are sculpted onto the body, you know, like his arm here, his legs. But he's such a big figure that you really don't care. He just looks amazing sitting on your shelf. I display mine with Ray just kind of standing inside of his mouth. So just picture it. The Ghostbusters get a call. There's a haunting at the old Wimpleton Mansion. And as Pete walks down the halls, he's thinking about all the ladies he knows and wants to go on dates with. And he doesn't hear the ghost coming up from behind him until it's too late. Pete stands about this tall inside the guy's mouth. You know, that might be a little too tall. You might want to sit him down a little bit. So he's got some nice coverage. I don't know. We shall see. Okay, so preparing this guy is very simple. You just got to get your slime. Oh, this stuff gets stuck every time. Now let's see if this works. Well, I am getting a bubble, but... Maybe his foot is in the way. So take one was a complete and utter failure. That ooze or slime was just way too thick and it clogged the little hole down there. So luckily I had this ectoplasm that came out when the 2016 movie came out and um you know, I really wanted the other one because I wanted to have purple. But, this is green. Ooh. This is not anywhere near as sticky. It seems very liquidy. So hopefully, this doesn't clog my pipes and everything works out just A-OK. -okay. So let's find out. So. Well... <laughs> Sounds a little like a wet fart. <laughs> I'm not getting a bubble though. Let's see if I can try to get rid of any air bubbles. This might be too thin. Son of a gun. I'm not. Well, back to the old drawing board. Okay, now take three. For this one, I bought this guy. He's a Venom figure. Hasbro made him. At the moment, Hasbro owns the license for the Ghostbuster toys. So, hopefully, that means uh, maybe this will work out. We shall see. Consistency of this seems pretty nice. It seems thin, yet sticky. So let's find out. My only problem, or the only thing I, I'm worried about is uh, possibly not having enough slime in there. But if there isn't, I got another one. I can maybe add this red to it. We'll see. Okay, now that I've let this settle for a little bit, I think I'm doing it a little too hard.
<laughs> no, I'm, getting, I'm getting something here. Okay, so with a little pumping, I got a little bit of a bubble here. Let's see if I can go all the way with this thing. Nope. Well, sort of. You know, maybe this would have worked better if I was using actual ectoplasm. Um, like, it's, I'm getting bubbles. I don't think you can get that where the guy's sitting in there and you're blowing a pretty big bubble r around him. Maybe. It always pops. Let's see here. Ooh, I'm getting pretty big bubbles now. Oh, popped. So, I mean, this thing sort of works doesn't work as good as a squisher. I mean, that's a pretty easy going uh, effect. It could be because I have this ooze or slime that doesn't meet the standards you need for ectoplasm. Who knows? I've seen some people get pretty big bubbles. Uh, I don't know if I've seen people actually get a bubble with a guy in there. So try to make it like a push a little thin spot. And they just blow it like a some bubble gum. That's the uh, advice I have for you. This is not working out too good. So, you know, toys in the 80s were great, and the real Ghostbusters could have been the best. The series began super strong, but soon after they stopped making the huge creatures... And the huge creative ghosts, you know. They started to focus more on the smaller ghosts and humanoid enemies. I love the haunted humans and the movie monsters, but I wish they would have focused more on the, uh, you know, this type of ghosts. Like big, creative, abstract ghosts. Stuff you've never seen before. Now that we've talked about the first and second best Cooper ghosts, next time I'm going to talk about the final Gooper Ghost in this terrible trio of ectoplasm, the Banshee Bomber.